Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you five things that you must know about Microsoft Project. These five things are don't use manual scheduled tasks. Don't change dates. Link your tasks only when a true dependency exists. Keep it simple. Build out your resource pool. Let's talk about more of those in turn. So don't use manually scheduled tasks. You can see here on my screen that I have manually scheduled tasks. Back in 2010, Microsoft made the decision to include manual and auto scheduled tasks. The differences are with manually scheduled tasks, you're in charge of controlling the dates and updating those tasks. With auto scheduled tasks, you've essentially turned on the Microsoft Project scheduling engine and Microsoft Projects will be in charge of controlling the dates and updating the tasks for you. So don't use them. Why not? Well, if you were to come in here and push out a task, say it's 18 months, you see nothing happens. It doesn't really push any other task out. Um, you can actually type into here any date you want. I can put in here instead of an actual date that makes sense. I can say Monday, All right? There you go, it was fighting me a little bit there because actual progress had been reported against that task. <laughs> so I can just put next week. For a duration I can say, not sure. See, not sure. <laughs> it really allows me to do whatever I want, okay? Um, so you're in control of everything and essentially, if those tasks are linked together, I'm gonna link them now, so you can see, you can still do that. You think, see things are pushed out as you do that, the dates change, but as they change again, if I go from 20 to 22 months, you can see that none of these dates were affected because it's a manually scheduled task. You can see that the finish date pushes out, but this link task does not move. And what I essentially have to do is come in and manually update that, or I could come in and click respect links. And I have to do it again, respect links and push them out manually. So it's very manual. The reason Microsoft invented this, I think, is to kind of get people to come over from Excel and they want to be able to type in things, bring in data, and then when they're ready, they could essentially come in here and set the task mode to auto schedule. Now, I'm actually going to come in here and make all of these auto scheduled. Now, the default in Microsoft Project, in fact, is manually scheduled, believe it or not. So let me do this here. All right, so I've made those all auto-scheduled. And what you wanna do is come down here where it says new tasks. Always make sure that you come in and set that that is not manually scheduled, but auto-scheduled. You can also do that in project options. So file, options, and you can come in here and say that um, new task, if I go to schedule, you can say that for all new projects that it's gonna be, see how the defaults manually, you can say, auto schedule so project options schedule all new projects make it auto schedule save that and now whenever I create a new project file new blank project for example you'll see that auto schedules the default that's going to save you so much trouble because most people like to use the scheduling engine it's one of the key benefits of leveraging Microsoft project all right don't use manually scheduled tasks next thing don't change dates Microsoft Project, now that I've got this scheduling engine switched on, manages dates for me. So for example, if I push out this task by a couple of months, you can see in the high, the blue highlighting, which means these dates have been affected based on the last change you made, and some down here too. Because I've updated this duration, the finished date pushed out, that was linked to the real estate permits and planning tasks. So they've also in turn pushed out. If I come in here and change a date, let's say I change the start date of city planning, it's not going to be 120, it's going to be, you know, uh, I'm going to say, uh, sorry, I went a bit quick there. If I come in here and say instead of January 2025, it's February 24th, 
the planning wizard is going to prompt me. It's going to say, you've moved a task away from a task that it's linked to. Do you want to move the task and remove the link, which makes sense, right? You're overwriting the scheduling engine. Do you want to move the task and keep the link kind of counterproductive because you're going to push out the task. It's going to be linked to something, but it's not going to make sense because that task that, that it's linked to is not driving the start date. Or cancel, don't move the task and keep the link. Basically, just you're doing something wrong. Don't do it again. <laughs> um, it, I'm just going to go move the task and keep the link just to see what it's like if we were to do this. So now it's causing scheduling conflicts, um, saying that uh, task 27, which is down here, okay, has a task constraint linked to it that cannot move. So you're pushing something that shouldn't be, can't, that's impacting something that can't be moved. The constraint cannot be set. Or I can I can cancel it or continue. I'm going to continue. So it really just messes everything up and it's warning us and warning us. I like that. You can see that it's got now got a constraint date on that task. It has in fact pushed the start date out. In fact, let's scroll to task here. You see it's pushed out. It's not starting when it should be starting based on the previous task start date, 117, 224. It's got a link. You'd be very confused to see why that has happened. Why is that one pushed out? That whenever you change a date in Microsoft Project, it will apply a constraint date. Very annoying, not something that you want. Do not change dates in Microsoft Project. <laughs> if you do want to change a date, think, why am I changing this date? Well, if it's the city planning and it has a predecessor of four, which is permits, well, it's probably because the permits are taking longer. Maybe I could put a lag between the two tasks. Maybe I could push out the duration of the permits. Those are other options that you could take. You can learn more about those in the resource planning video that I have. So the task planning and updating project progress tasks that I have. I said tasks that I have, videos that I have. I'll post a link here. You see, I do these very rough. Apologies for that, but anyway. All right, next thing, what do I want to show you next? Let's talk about linking your tasks only where a true dependency exists. To make this really simple, I'm going to create a new schedule here. I'm going to put task A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, so to link your tasks together, you know, I've got videos on this as well, linking tasks. You can just come in, link them all, right? Very simple, but what you shouldn't do is link two tasks together if there's not a true dependency. So if F doesn't actually require E to be completed, you should not just link it to make your schedule flow nicely, all right? Really think about it, all right? So if you've got like um, walls, in a like let's say I'm building a house, right? So um, put walls up, um, I need to paint walls, um, and I also need to hang ceiling fan. Right? I don't necessarily have to have the walls or the walls painted before I hang the ceiling fan. It actually just needs to be dependent upon there being a ceiling in place, right? And maybe that ceiling had been painted. Do not link this to this because that's the way you, in the order that you want to do it. Do it to where it truly depends on. The ceiling has been erected or the foundations up, whatever it is, right? Make sure that's in place because when you're planning out your project, you may have all the best intentions of these things happening, but things can go wrong as they inevitably do. And you want to be able to push your schedule around and push dates out and, and things like that and increase durations, add additional tasks and see what happens, right? If it's hang fan can be done earlier on because it wasn't linked to the painting of the walls, then great, we can get that bit done to save some time later down the line. So only link a task where a true dependency exists. Keep it simple, all right? What I mean by this is whenever you're having a project schedule, I have a, a rule, it's not what is particularly conventional, but I say don't have a task be less than half a day, all right? And don't let, let it be more than 40 hours. Make sure that your names of your tasks are easy to understand, right? So uh, erect walls, 
That would probably take me three days. Oops, task there. Paint the walls, that probably take me two days. Hang the fan. Uh, is it actually half a day? Probably not, right? Maybe it'll be in an hour. Do we really need to be putting that ceiling fan in there? Maybe we're gonna put, hang all the fans. Can we combine that? Hang all fans in house. Half a day, right? Not only being smarter, we're thinking through it. When can we do all of those fans? To do all the fans, all the walls need to be up potentially. All the ceilings need to be up. Let's link it to that task. So not only by putting half day tasks in here, are you becoming more efficient in the way that you're working, but it makes the schedule much simpler. Keep it simple. Next task, build out your resource pool. So my, this is a really important trick that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to come to the view ribbon and click on resource sheet. Here is where all of your resources can be created. I've got other videos for creating your resource pools and I'll post the link in here. But real briefly, you know, come in here and type in the names of your, of your resources. All right, so we've got a couple of work resources here. Put in the rates. The reason I do it here is so I don't forget down the line. What's their overtime rate? Maybe 75, something like that, right? What's their calendar? Oh, I need to create a calendar for them. Maybe they work 24 hours night shift or some other calendar that I want to create. And you can create your own calendars. That's not what this video is for. But what I'm saying here is build out your resource pool. Maybe I need some bricks. That's going to be a material resource. How much do we charge for bricks? Maybe it's $10. How many is that? Put in the material label. You see this column here is misleading. It's material label, pallet, right? $10 for a pallet of bricks, great, pretty cheap. Cheaper than what it is right now for me to build my house. All right, there we go. So build out your resource pool and then leverage those resources in the schedule. You can see if I come out here to the resource names column, I can then start assigning quickly and easily my resources. I've got other videos on how to assign resources, but this is just a quick and easy how to do that. Um, the reason I do that is exactly what I was saying earlier. You want to make sure that you're putting in the standard rates, aligning them with a calendar, overtime rates, if you're creating material resources, what's the material label, etc. What you shouldn't do is just come in here and, start and type a name. All right, Tom Henry, Thomas Henry. Boom, I've got two Thomas Henrys now. And it'll allow me to do that. The resource sheet, I've got Thomas Henry and Tom Henry. <laughs> What's better is Thomas Henry's free. Which one are you going to use, Tom or Thomas? Right? He doesn't have the correct calendar assigned with him. Right? Maybe he's on the uh, night shift. Not what you want. All right, so there we go. Those are five things that you should definitely do in Microsoft Project to make your life easier. If you follow those guidelines, you're going to be in a very good spot. Thanks for watching.